Hello and thank you for joining me. As you can see, I have a new tarot deck. <laughs> this is a strange deck. So I came across this deck on Instagram. When I started seeing imagery from the deck, I was like, that is so weird and I need to have it. So you'll see what I mean about the weirdness once we get into the imagery. When I started looking into the deck further, I found out that it is not just a tarot deck. It is a tarot deck which is based on a podcast called Welcome to Night Vale. I had never heard this podcast, but because I thought the imagery in this deck was just so interesting, of course I had to listen to a couple of episodes of the podcast while I waited for the deck to get here in the mail. So the podcast, um, as a brief premise for those of you who are not familiar with it, is a fiction podcast which is based in the fictional desert town of Night Vale, which is a very strange place where odd and bizarre and surreal occurrences happen quite frequently. The narrator of the podcast is, from what I can gather, kind of like a newscaster, sort of just sharing information about what's going on in the town. I have Lulu here. Lulu's hovering just out of the camera. Yes, hello, Lulu. So I've only now heard maybe like two or three episodes of the podcast. I'm not super familiar with it, but this is where the deck came from. The person who I originally saw sharing the deck on Instagram told me they have never heard the podcast. So if you are just interested in the deck as a standalone thing to work with, I think that's certainly an option. But I kind of like the weird, creepy, kind of funny vibe of the podcast, so I'll probably keep listening to more episodes. Um, but anyways, all of this preamble aside, let's get into the deck. So this is a unboxing video, but in all honesty, it's like an unbagging video because this deck actually doesn't come in a box. It came in this bag, which is kind of like a, like a velvety texture. It is going to be covered in cat hair. That's just simply going to happen. So the cards are just right in the bag with a bit of plastic wrap on them. So let's get that off there. I do apologize for the lighting. It is super cloudy and I'm sitting in front of a window to try and get as much light as possible, but I kind of figure like the cloudy vibe, the darkness sort of matches this deck anyway, so hopefully it's not too distracting. Anyways, we got the deck out of the plastic. Here is the back of the cards. It's like you can already get a feel for the vibe of the deck just by looking at the back of the cardstock. It's like this weird kind of like to me it sort of looks like an eye but then there's like this portal and this like hypnotizing swirl happening and this kind of like creepy pink color that sort of looks like almost like a toxic cloud going on. Okay I know I'm taking a long time so let's start going through the imagery. Again I'm not going to really know the references from the podcast that well since I've only heard a couple of episodes but let's just see what we've got here. Okay The Fool. Already you get a feel for the vibe of this deck. It's just a very strange image, but something about the sky being wide open and kind of having the light going down towards the horizon does give me those like classic fool vibes of starting out into something new. And I love how bizarre this is because to me it kind of reminds you that sometimes starting new doesn't always feel like fresh and exciting and invigorating, it can feel really weird and it can feel really trippy to start something new, so that's kind of what I get with this one. The Magician, this has, for some reason this feels like just in the art, it is giving me some of those classic RWS vibes with these two hands, they almost remind me of the aces in the Rider Waite Smith. Um, I love that the wand and the sword are essentially puncturing right through the hand, but we still have a lot of the classic imagery we associate with the magician. You know, we have the four suits, we have the hand, one hand is facing up, one hand is facing down, so we kind of get the as above, so below thing. I'm going to actually try to zoom in a little so you can see these hopefully a little better. Oh uh, yeah, that's going to be better. And then let me... There. Yeah, that'll be better. Okay, so the High Priestess. This, the colors on this one are what really give me the high, how I traditionally see the High Priestess. Kind of these, almost like it's like a pink and then it gets really like this dark purpley and then black towards the bottom. It feels like going down into the unconscious. And this person themselves, I just love, I don't really know what this is supposed to be. I don't know what is on this person's head, 
but it looks really striking. It kind of reminds me of, again, in the Rider Waite Smith, we have a figure in sort of this traditional garb. So maybe this is just like this otherworldly, you know, kind of surreal garb that this high priestess is wearing. Here's the Empress. This is an interesting one because the way that she's holding this mirror and then almost like being blinded by her own reflection, it feels this, I don't know, like, it, I don't know if I can get traditional Empress from this. I bet I could if I thought about it enough. But the first thing it brings to me is just like vanity and being like being so full of yourself and being like, I don't know, blinded by your own reflection. This is one I'll have to sit with more. I love the art here in the Emperor. I love the colors. I can't tell what's actually happening in this image. Okay, taking a closer look at it, they're dead birds. That's what we have here. I don't know if I can get the Emperor from this. This one, like the Empress, I'd have to think about and figure out if I could actually use this in a reading, but it's a striking image either way. Here's the hero font, and oh goodness, look at that. Misspelling. Miss spelling hero font is I before E, I believe. Um, I actually, I love this because some of you might know that I recently released my own deck, the Spacious Tarot, and we did end up with a misspelling in our deck, so shit happens. I know there's at least one other deck that has a misspelling on the Hierophant as well, so that's not going to bother me. I just think it's kind of funny and interesting. But what's really great about this card is this image is super rad. Um, it just, you know, this, this Hierophant does kind of have that like traditional, almost Christian look to it. So it kind of calls back to those Rider Waite Smith vibes. But the fact that I'm not sure what's happening to his face, but the fact that something bizarre is happening to his face, to me, I could get from this Hierophant vibes of, you know, not getting so stuck in your belief systems and being willing to let your belief systems transform you, not being blinded by your belief systems. So this one really actually works for me. I could definitely read with this one. The Lovers, this is great. This is another one where this is probably the most kind of Rider Waite Smith vibes in terms of the imagery. Uh, instead of an angel above the two figures, we have what, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, but it kind of feels like UFO to me. It's like they're getting beamed up into this other dimension, which is just really quirky, and I honestly, I love it. I think this is a great lover's card. Ooh, the chariot, that's really cool too. That actually reminds me a little bit of what we did with the chariot in my deck, the Spacious Tarot. Um, very different vibes, but just this idea of you're almost in this first person vantage point, which is what we do in the Spacious Tarot with almost all of our cards. That's what we have here with this chariot, the, you know, this train track, and you're going down toward this bright horizon. And again, it's the, the colors in this deck. There's just something about them. I can't really put my finger on it, but... It just feels really different and I am here for it. Wow, what a different strength card, but this, I actually love this image and it brings up some certain angles of the strength card for me because something I often think about with that card is confronting what is unruly within yourself. Traditionally in Rider Waite Smith, we have the woman with the lion and sometimes they think about the lion as, you know, again, symbolizing that the unruly parts of your nature or the shadowy parts of your nature. So the fact that here we have a figure in this black cloak that kind of has that symbolism for me and then sort of like prying open their own face. It is very visceral. I know that this will not be everyone's thing with this deck, but I think it's just a, a really cool image and it does bring up a certain angle of strength for me. The Hermit was probably the card that sold me on this deck. I haven't seen every card in this deck, but this is definitely one of the ones that I did see and I just thought it was so awesome. It's another one that it, I feel like is like a bizarro cousin of the Spacious Tarot in some ways because the colors are sort of similar. Our Hermit also has black and purple and um, our Hermit has just this like solitary lantern. So this one has these hands holding this light bulb and I just love it. It's very striking and it's just super cool. The Wheel of Fortune is giving me almost like dolly vibes. It's this very surreal looking thing with this clock sort of being shattered. One thing I do remember from the uh, one or two episodes that I did here of the podcast is 
like time doesn't work normally in Night Vale, so this might be a nod to that in some way. I'm honestly not sure about this Justice card. I just, I don't know. You know, some of them I can stretch myself to get into how I view the card. This one, it just honestly kind of feels like a horror movie to me, and a lot of this deck does, but it feels that in like a cool and a really interesting way, whereas this, I'm just, I don't know, I have to think about this one, I'm not getting justice from this card. Mm, yeah, the Hangman also not really doing it for me. It is creepy, and it does seem like we're looking at someone who possibly has been literally hanged, which is what we see a lot in the Hanged Man. And yeah, I don't know. It's just, I'm not sure about that one. Death. <laughs> oh, there it is. A uh, plain white card. I can't decide how I feel about this one. This is another one that I did see on Instagram. And part of me thinks it's a very cool way to show death because it's just completely showing nothing. It's also, I could see it as being a little bit nihilistic is in terms of just having this view of like, you die and that's it. So I don't know, but I, I, it's kind of cool because there's really a lot of different ways you could read it. But at the same time, part of me is like, it's kind of a cop out to just have like a blank card for death. So I'll have to see how I feel about that one. Temperance is another one that has some of the familiar imagery we're used to from Rider Waite Smith based decks, but of course with a Night Vale twist. I'm not sure exactly what I'm getting from this in an interpretive sense, but it's certainly a striking image. I like that the person is split in half. That could speak to sometimes with temperance, there's themes of balance at work. So this person being kind of split down the middle. And as I'm looking at it closer, I don't know if this is what was intended by the artist, but it's like the this is an angel maybe because there's angel wings but then there's like these flames coming up around the angel wings so i think it would be really cool if this was like an angel devil hybrid that we were seeing in temperance that would be pretty sweet so that's how i'm going to choose to think of it i don't know if that's what it's actually supposed to be i'm also not sure about the devil it's a cool image but i'm not sure what i'm getting from it the tower reminds me a little bit of the lovers with this beam situation happening it's also another one that's more what we're used to seeing with the tower because we do have an actual tower here. Um, but it's kind of interesting instead of usually the tower is crumbling down to the ground, it's like this tower is being again pulled up into another dimension, which is actually kind of a cool twist on the tower. The star is another one that I'd seen on Instagram and it's another example of it's just so weird, but I kind of love it and I kind of can get what I typically think of as the star from this card, especially the angle of going for your own North Star, heading towards what is right for you, and also finding comfort and reprieve in that because this person is almost embracing these stars, almost even possibly consuming these stars. And there's such a joy in that to me. Again, I don't know if that's what the artist intended, but it kind of feels like letting yourself just hold things close that are meaningful to you and really like merge with those things. For the moon, we have the crab kind of holding on to the moon. Honestly, I'm kind of underwhelmed with this one, especially because this entire deck as a whole has a very the moon vibe, very like surreal, weird, trippy. And so for the actual moon card to just be this, it's, I don't not like it. I just was expecting maybe something more. I love the sun. I love it. Like this is just so weird and I could see this being kind of bleak in a lot of ways because it's like this black sun, but it just looks super cool. Not sure about judgment. I am probably completely off from what was intended in this, but here's my sort of stretch of how I'm going to get to how I think of the meaning of this card. We had earlier with the tower and with the lovers, almost this beam kind of pulling, pulling the people and pulling the tower up into it. So I'm going to say with judgment, it's like now you're in that place where you've been pulled into that new dimension. You're letting yourself embrace that and you're having this transformation of like being in your purpose. That's what I'm going to tell myself with this card. Here's the world, another super weird image. Um, I'm not sure, but some of the things I think about with this one is like embracing all aspects of yourself. That that idea of finding integration is part of the world. So this like weird figure with all these barnacles growing on them and being like halfway in water, halfway on land. 
I, you know, again, it might be like a stretch, but I could get like the barnacles being a metaphor for just like all of the strange aspects of who you are and of your psyche. And then water, of course, is like your unconscious self and air is your conscious self, what you show to the world. So I don't know, maybe I'm reading into it a lot, but I feel like I could actually get a lot out of this imagery. I'm going to try to move a little quicker go now going into the minors because otherwise we'll seriously be here all day. Um, but here's the Ace of Wands. Oh man, I was like, I'm going to go quicker, but I'm already like, look how cool this card is. It kind of reminds me of the Magician, how we had the hand with the wand sort of piercing through it. And then there's almost this like Mars-like landscape underneath. Two of Wands, definitely Rider weight inspired, but with a sort of bizarro twist. Same thing with the Three of Wands, Rider weight iconography, we can see that at work here. Moving into a new horizon, going towards something, beckoning you in the distance, I get all of that. Yeah, now that I'm going through the minors, um, they do seem to be, you know, you, they're pretty Rider weight based Conflict, hassles, flames. Here is this multi-legged horse carrying a bunch of wands. Yeah, now that I'm going through them more, I do like these, but they're, they're not as striking to me as the majors, probably because they are, a lot of them, just so Rider Waite Smith based that I, I guess I maybe expected something a little more surprising with this deck because the majors were so surprising. I do really like this Eight of Wands. It's a little bit different than what we're used to seeing with the Rider Waite Smith, but I still get, um, for me, I think a lot about synchronicity with the Eight of Wands, things lining up and being willing to follow it when things line up, follow what feels hot for you so I can get all of that with this image. This is kind of cool because there's so many facets to the Nine of Wands, but sometimes it does come up to talk about burning out, which is exactly what seems to be happening here. I really like this Ten of Wands as well. It's almost like the, the human figure and the matchstick or kind of wands are merging together into one entity. Here's our Page of Wands. I like that the figure is relatively ambiguous. We can't really nail down like a specific gender um, or anything like that with this imagery, which is something I've come to really like in court cards when they're uh, a bit more open-ended instead of being so specific. Oh yeah, Knight of Wands, super weird, very much what I expect from this deck. I do sometimes think of the Knight of Wands of having a lot of reckless tendencies, and so there, there is kind of like a self-destruction thing going on, like what is even happening at the bottom of this card's like entrails? It is pretty gruesome. I'm not sure about the Queen. I like this imagery, but I'll have to sit with it, think about what it means for me. That is quite a creepy King of Wands, isn't it? I do, one thing that I think about a lot with the King of Wands is um, sometimes the King of Wands has this restless energy to me. And I kind of get that with this card, the way this figure feels like so cerebral. It doesn't really necessarily feel like a down-to-earth figure. It's like so shape-shifting and it does feel kind of restless. Like if you look at this King of Wands in another instant from what the snapshot is we're seeing here, something different is going to be happening because the King of Wands does not like to be static into our cups and you can already see there is some cool color things happening throughout the suits. The wands definitely had those fiery colors and it seems like we're going to have more of these like blues and pinks here with the cups. I love this Ace of Cups. It's honestly like for this deck, I'm surprised I'm saying this, but it's actually really pretty. Two of Cups, that's what I'm talking about. This card just exemplifies what I really like about this deck. It's just so weird and it is a little grotesque, but it's also like kind of sweet. These just disembodied hands just coming out from this cup and joining together. It's great. Three of Cups, another one with like Rider Waite Smith vibes, but it with a bit of a strange twist to it. Same thing with the Four of Cups. Honestly, the ones that are really closely linked to the Rider Waite Smith are a little boring to me. However, I do like that the cup is on this person's head because it's just kind of funny. But I kind of like this one. It's like this figure is moving away from the upright cups and going towards the cups that are knocked over, which is actually kind of nice. Again, I don't know if any of this was intended by the artist, but it feels like a reminder that going directly into grief and letting yourself be with things that are difficult and sad is actually sometimes what you really need to do. The Six of Cups just made me laugh. Um, 
I don't really know like it's just so it's just funny to me like we're used to thinking of the six of cups at least for me of being about you know like in the Rider Waite Smith there's this little childlike figure offering the other childlike figure some flowers and in this one it's like hey let me spill some I don't know what this is tar ink onto you it's just so weird seven of cups this is so funny because this to me is kind of like the moon where this deck as a whole has very like the moon and seven of cups vibes to me and i'm honestly just kind of underwhelmed by the seven of cups it's not even as weird as the seven of cups in the rider white smith another one that's pretty standard what we're used to seeing i do like that there's this sort of strange imagery of the water coming out of one of these cups and connecting to the figure in the distance Nine of Cups, okay, we have a slightly different imagery, um, but this is one I'll have to think about. I'm not sure what I'm getting from it in terms of meaning. I do really like this Ten of Cups because you can see the Rider Waite Smith inspiration, but it's like this very strange version of it. It almost to me looks like these figures are in this like desolate toxic swamp or something like that and then there's this weird pyramid in the sky but they're still just like you know what maybe it's the end of the world maybe there's we're surrounded by toxic sludge but let's just celebrate let's just toss these cups all around and have a good time i really like that page of cups it's just fun the fish being dumped out it just has this really strange vibe to it but it also kind of in a weird way has like the sweetness that i associate with the page of cups Okay, so apparently our knights, we like to have entrails because we had entrails with our knight of wands and now here we are again with our knight of cups. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm getting from this one. Um, the entrails may be a little bit more on the gross spectrum than where I want them to be. I like this deck because it's weird, but that's a little, eh, that's a little, maybe not so much, not for me. I'm not sure what to make of this queen of cups either, except there's some kind of black goo oozing off of the queen of cups hands which reminds me of what was happening in the six of cups maybe those are related somehow and there's our king of cups i don't know i might be again just going completely out of left field of anything that was intended with this deck but hey that's kind of what tarot is right we got to project things onto it with our intuition um you know cops are about the emotional realm and the king of cups is this master of emotional intelligence so with the face and hand seeming to me to be kind of disembodied here it sort of makes me feel these vibes of this king of cups being so immersed in the emotional landscape that there's really not a difference from where that ends and where they begin um, they're still able to be themselves and be fully actualized even as they're totally immersed within this emotional realm Okay, we're going to move on to the swords, and I know I keep saying I need to move faster, but this time I'm really like, oh, not a lot of room left on my camera. Ace of Swords, again, it's almost like there's, I can't really tell, I'd have to take a closer look, but I do sort of see this hand being pierced by this sword, which is kind of cool, and I like that there's this clearing in the clouds where the sword is coming through, so I can definitely get that, like, mental clarity message. The Two of Swords is perfect. It still has that Rider Waite Smith inspiration, but with this gruesome, weird twist that goes so well with this deck. The Three of Swords, we're used to seeing as sword-piercing hearts, but I can't think of another deck where the heart is so... Um, it looks so like anatomy like, like an actual heart. Usually it's like, you know, like the Rider Waite Smith, like a cute little heart doodle. I really like this Four of Swords because, of course, she's resting, so you get that aspect of the card. But I like that the sword is next to her because it's kind of like, gives me like sleep with one eye open type of vibes, like rest, but don't fully let your guard down. The Five of Swords here works really well for me. I don't know, this is, again, maybe just my projection, but something about how this person is sort of cutting in and out of the frame and their head's kind of like appearing in the clouds. It reminds me of something I think about a lot with the Five of Swords, which is tearing yourself down, being your own worst critic. I really like the colors on the Six of Swords and very Rider Waite based imagery. Yeah, another one not a ton to say about that there is something weird happening with like hands being sliced through the swords so it's kind of gruesome but it's what we're used to seeing to a large extent imagery wise same thing with the eight of swords oh that one's kind of cool it's like this figure is levitating classic a lot it seems like all of the pages have their faces covered like this don't they sure enough what did you expect gotta have entrails on our night the queen, oh, this feels, is this a little similar to that figure that was in the High Priestess? I'm not sure, I'd have to look at them side by side. 
This is an interesting King of Swords because usually I think of the King of Swords as being very rational and using the power of the mind in a very like linear way. But this King of Swords has this trippy, you know, like maybe using the mind for more uh, sur surreal purposes. I got to blast through these pentacles so I don't lose my camera life. There's the Ace of Pentacles. Kind of reminds me of the sun a little bit. I'm not sure I'm getting the traditional meaning from the Two of Pentacles, but it sure is kind of a cool image. Three of Pentacles. Oh, that's kind of interesting for the Four of Pentacles, almost like digging themselves into this hole. Five of Pentacles, it feels to me like there's this weird entity, like this alien figure there inside of the church. And it's almost like usually the church is where you would seek reprieve, but this is like, you know what, maybe you're better off out where you are. There's also this reoccurring thing in the pentacles with these like black holes. I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, you know what? It just occurred to me. Those are the pentacles. It's like these pentacles are like these black holes. That's super cool. I love that six of pentacles. That's what I'm talking about. Seven of pentacles, checking in on, uh, you know, how things are going with your black holes, what kind of leaves are coming up from your black holes. I love this because it's kind of like, the futility. I don't know, I don't want to read into it really negatively, but I find that kind of delightful that usually the Eight of Swords is, or Eight of Pentacles is like, working hard is good, and this one it's almost like it has this sort of like futility to it, um, which is delightful. I do not get this Nine of Pentacles, so I need to think about that. Yeah, we got some Rider Waite Smith vibes with the Ten of Pentacles. There's our page, got their face covered, of course. Kind of reminds me of the star. I think maybe these are flowers, but it still kind of reminds me of that star card. Look at this, we have our knight of pentacles, and there are some entrails, but it's also like something beautiful blooming from the entrails. This is my favorite knight. Queen of pentacles, oh, reminds me of the empress. We have the mirror again. And king of pentacles. Okay, I, my camera is about to run out of space, but this deck is super cool, and I can't wait to work with it further. I wanted to talk a little more about it, but we do not have time, so if you have questions or comments, leave them below and we can have a chat there. Talk to you next time.